Hi, I'm Josh Wood from CoreOS. In previous episodes in our series, we've taken a look at how to run applications on Tectonic Enterprise Kubernetes clusters, and at the pods and deployment abstractions that regulate, scale, and replicate that work on the cluster. We've also illustrated how services provide an endpoint separated from the ephemeral pods that are running within this deployment that may be killed, restarted, or scaled up and down from a named stable endpoint at which other cluster applications can access the features of our application. However, that leaves out an important piece. The internet has no route to, idea how to find, or any way to connect to this endpoint. Somehow, we need to arrange reachable endpoints at the edge of our cluster network to reach the services provided by these applications. Now, Kubernetes can program many common load balancers, like those offered by common network cloud providers like Azure, AWS, and GCP. Looking at a cluster where we're running on AWS, um, we can actually see that I've set up one of these load balanced services already. And now we'll take a look in Tectonic Console at how we set up one of those services. Switching over to the Tectonic Console, you can see I've already got a deployment here for the Nginx web server. Um, it's a simple, stateless application, easy to demonstrate things like this with. Um, looking at the Nginx deployment, we have three pods running, and we want to note this key thing of the app label that we'll use in our service to identify which application we're trying to route traffic to. So sliding down here to our services section, um, we can see that we don't have a service for the Nginx deployment yet, and we're going to create one. Now let's take a look at creating a service for the Nginx deployment. Here in Tectonic Console, we can get a skeleton of our service manifest really easily by clicking the Create Service button. And we're just going to adjust a few parameters here to match an Nginx deployment um, and locate that by the app equals Nginx selector that we looked at. So I'm going to name the service Nginx, logically enough. And I'm going to tell it that I want it to select to route traffic to uh, things labeled with app Nginx as our Nginx deployment is. Now the other thing we know about the Nginx pods is that they're listening on their port 80. So we want to change this target port to match that so that traffic can reach the right port on the inside, the cluster side. Now by clicking create here, we will get um, a default type of service, which as we mentioned in our previous, previous episode, is not available to internet clients. Um, this cluster IP is actually only available to other applications and deployments, other workloads running within the cluster. However, we can change that really easily and use Kubernetes' ability to program external load balancers with a very simple change to our YAML manifest. If I go in here and just change cluster IP to be type load balancer, um, Kubernetes will actually program an AWS Elastic Load Balancer at the edge of my cluster network and give me a DNS name that traffic can use to reach that endpoint. Now we've saved these changes, we can switch back over to our overview panel and we can see the external load balancer we've, uh, we've provisioned on AWS and the address at which our service will now be available. Now it's easy to use a C name in a quick DNS change to get a friendly name to route to that rather lengthy AWS ELB name. Taking a look at the Nginx details screen for the service that we just manipulated, we can see the external load balancer that we've already pointed to. And even before we create a friendly C name to point to this DNS name, we can copy and paste this and route traffic to our Nginx service and see our Nginx demo page instantaneously, as you see here. So here is the default Nginx uh, index page shown with any new Nginx install and showing that traffic is being routed through our Nginx service, through the app equals Nginx selector, back to the pods running in our Nginx deployment. Services give an abstracted endpoint for cluster resources to be accessed both within the cluster and, as we've shown with load balancers, from outside. Next time, we'll take a look at using ingress controllers and ingress resources to avoid creating a load balancer, a metered load balancer, on your cloud provider for every single service you may want to provide to the outside world. Thank you.